Englishman Alexander Parks' work in 1862 paved the way for a young inventor from New York named John Wesley Hyatt. Seeking a cheaper substitute for ivory to make checkers and other game pieces, Hyatt focused on a nitrated cellulose compound. When a New York manufacturer offered a $10,000 prize for the best ivory substitute for making billiard balls, Hyatt improved the use of nitrated cellulose by adding camphor, which made the compound easier to mold under heat and pressure. Hyatt patented his compound in 1869 under the name celluloid. Celluloid had a significant economic impact as it immediately began to be used for a variety of purposes. In 1881, George Eastman, an amateur photographer at the time, resigned from his bookkeeper position at the Rochester Savings Bank. Well, thank goodness he did, because just eight years later, he introduced transparent, flexible film made from cellulose. That would change the highly specialized trade of photography into an everyday affair for the general public. Leo Hendrik Bakeland, a Belgian immigrant, invented Bakelite, the first phenolic thermoset in 1907. Bakelite offered good insulation from heat and electricity, and companies such as General Electric and Westinghouse quickly came calling. In 1937, as the plastics industry continued to explode in size and scope, its major players became increasingly competitive and recognized the need to form the Society of the Plastics Industry. A trade association to broker fair practices, develop standards, monitor statistical trends, and become the industry's liaison with government. In 1935, Wallace Carruthers and Julian Hill researchers for the DuPont company developed nylon as a substitute for silk. Today, nylon is used in hundreds of applications, from electrical connectors and automobile oil pans to fabric, carpeting, and sports equipment. In 1938, while trying to create a new refrigerant, Roy Plunkett, a DuPont chemist, discovered that a frozen, compressed sample of tetrafluoroethylene had polymerized spontaneously into a white, waxy solid to form polytetrafluoroethylene. PTFE and other fluoropolymers are some of the most valuable, versatile technologies ever invented, contributing to advancements in aerospace, communications, and electronics. Highly fire-resistant, Plunkett's invention has proven valuable to the clothing and tools used by soldiers and firefighters and has saved millions of lives. Necessity, Plato said, is the mother of invention. This proved correct in the 1940s as World War II created a huge demand for plastics as substitutes for scarce materials. Polyethylene was born out of the need for a superior insulating material that could be used for radar cable during the war. It is no coincidence that this highly accelerated time period of scientific discovery spurred the formation of the Society of Plastics Engineers in 1942. Where would the latest plastic products be shown off to a curious public? The first NPE or National Plastics Exposition. It was held in 1946 on two floors of the Grand Central Palace in New York City. The 1950s brought the introduction of polypropylene and the development of acetal and polycarbonate. The outstanding impact, strength, and stability of these engineering thermoplastics enabled them to compete directly and favorably with metal in many applications including the fiberglass body material used in the 1953 Chevrolet Corvette and the ultra-modern plastic chairs designed by Charles and Ray Eames and Eero Saarinen. And in 1960, plastic surpassed aluminum to become one of the largest industries in the United States. PET, PTFE, and other high-performance materials designed to meet the demanding thermal needs of the space age. In its February 1962 issue, Modern Plastics called the space program the best testimonial yet devised for plastics. 
with approximately 60 years behind it. The modern plastics industry was ready to look back and honor some of its pioneers in the 1970s. So in 1972, SPI and Modern Plastics Magazine established the Plastics Hall of Fame to celebrate those who contributed to the industry's growth and success. Of course, the industry continued to innovate in 1977. DuPont engineer Nathaniel Wyeth developed the first polyethylene terephthalate, PET, for beverage containers that could withstand the pressure of carbonated liquids. The brother of famous artists N.C. and Andrew Wyeth, Nathaniel often called himself the other Wyeth. Yet his invention is used widely around the world today for both carbonated and non-carbonated drinks. The explosion of new consumer electronics that arrived in the 1980s would not have been possible without plastics. From insulation and housing to circuit boards, computer chips, and compact discs, high-performance plastics provided tough, dimensionally stable parts that could withstand both the stress of assembly and the strain of use. SPI, the Plastics Industry Trade Association, celebrated its 50th anniversary in 1987. The organization's 1988 NPE trade show featured 1,030 exhibitors and 73,000 attendees. The concept of sustainability may already be revolutionizing our industry as innovations in recycling, energy efficiency, and environmentally conscious design are emerging to meet societal demands and increase the bottom lines of forward-thinking companies. The possibilities and expanding role of plastics throughout the rest of the 21st century is unlimited. Like the 19th century pioneers and 20th century innovators that came before them, the plastics industry dreamers of today and tomorrow will continue to make our world a brighter, better, and thriving place to live.